Hey folks, and in this video we are going to take a look at the Lessons tool in Moodle. So as always, once you're in your Moodle course, you want to come up to Edit Mode and turn that on. And then you want to come down and create the Lesson tool. So select Add an Activity or Resource. And if you look around at the different tools, come here to Lesson. And we want to give this a name. So I am going to borrow things from a article on Wikipedia on the Uncanny Valley because I always find that fascinating. I can give it a description. Again, I might want to provide a description and give students a sense of what they can anticipate in the entire lesson. Um, I may want, you know, if this is if I have several lessons throughout, or this is, you know, week one lesson. Again, providing some context, letting students know what it is that they're stepping into. Uh, and then I start to get some choices. So uh, appearance wise, actually before we do this, let's just come up here and do expand all so we can see all of our options. All right, appearance, do I want a pr progress bar so students will know uh, where they are? I tend to say yes to this. I think this is important to always let students know um, where things are, where they are going with things. And I selected the show more just so we get a real sense of, of what this can look like, how we understand what what the different options are. So the thing about lessons is it can be a really powerful contained space where you have students reading, reviewing, you know, doing activities of all sorts that are already within Moodle, but are all contained in one space in, in framing it as this is something students go and do um, within a given module or something like that. Um, so it can be really useful, especially if you want to guide them through a process or, you know, have them really kind of sit with something through several different uh, pieces of information and activities. So some of these some of these options really are about if this is going to be something that they are graded, um, then what are your op what are their options? So display ongoing score is exactly that. Do you want the, to be able to see how they're doing as they go throughout? Um, what's the minimum grade to display menu? That is, what what how much how many points do they have to have coming into this in order to see the menu? And again, whenever you're in doubt, always click on the little question marks next to each item. Um, and it lets you know kind of where what those options are. Um, so slideshow, slideshow turns it into a slideshow with kind of fixed width and height. I don't recommend this. I haven't played around with it too much, but I would be concerned about how this works on different screens. Uh, and it may feel a little, it may kind of feel a little harder to control or navigate. Maximum number of answers in certain areas where you are asking questions beyond true false, then um, how many answers do you want there to be available? Um, again, some of these options are, are you probably won't have to worry about if you're using it more as a guide than as, as something that they will be graded on. Linked to next activity, I actually do recommend um, thinking about this once your course is built out, only because sometimes you can get to the end and they're not sh that it's not clear or navigation is isn't always perfect. Progress bar, I always think it's important to let students to know where they are. And then display menu, this means that the menu of uh, all the things within the module is viewable. Again, unless you're really trying to walk them through a very particular guided path, um, I tend to click, I tend to select yes, because I think it's important for them uh, to be able to move around and if they have callback or they want to go back and review something. Availability, uh, again, depending on how you're using this, if this is going to be an actual assignment, then you might want to set when the deadline is. I don't recommend setting a time limit. I think that, again, we it runs into bigger challenges in terms of making it, uh, in terms of the stress added to the students. Again, there's a few more uh, options, such as you can do password protected um, or allow the lesson to be attempted offline using the mobile app. I would tend to select this as yes, because again, students may need to download the course um, to have more stable access to the course information. All right, so some things around flow control, uh, allow student to review. All this means is that they are able to uh, move back and forth. They can move back and forth through the, uh, the actual lesson, um, rather than again being controlled with uh, a one directional approach. 
uh, provide the option to, uh, to try a question again. Um, so just to step back, I would say yes for this and then provide an option to try a question again. Uh, if you have questions, if you're doing any kind of quizzing feature within it, then this would allow them to do it again, to, to do a question again for no credit, but to see if they can get the right answer. And then maximum attempts uh, per question. You can have that set as one, att um, one attempt or unlimited, or all the way up to unlimited. We'll get a few more features under here. Um, after action after correct um, is they follow the normal pathway, or you can, if they get it right, you can show an unseen page or show an unanswered page. So you can kind of sub you can set this up so that there's interesting pathways or surprises, um, but you don't. That's if you're really getting into doing this um, in a, in a particularly deep way, and it takes a little time to really think through those pro those aspects. Uh, number of pages to show. This is pretty simple. Um, you won't really be using this unless you are using it in conjunction with the action after uh, correct answer. So grades, if this is going to be something that is graded, um, you would give it its point value, or if it's not graded, you can just select none and take out some of those options. Uh, practice lesson, if you want them to be able to kind of go through um, or if you want them to be able to do it and not have it show up in the gradebook, um, but still have it as an activity, so or something that they have to really kind of uh, aspire to some score. Retakes allowed. Uh, again, if you're doing this as something that's going to be evaluated, consider do you want them to be able to do it, yes or no? I will tend to always go with yes because I think. You know, this, so much of this is about practice and learning and having opportunities to show that they're learning. Uh, again, these relate to the, if you're having this count um, or if you wanted to create a score, even if it's not going to be added to the gradebook. So custom scoring, being able to adjust the point value of the different questions that you ask, and that includes positive and negative uh, points. And then minimum number of questions. So if this is set to zero, that means um, you don't have to have any questions. If you have five, then it means you need to have at least five. Uh, common module settings, again, by and large, um, not going to bother with that. Similar to restrict access. And then um, activity completion. I typically will have it show activity as complete. Uh, and then you have different options in here. And you know, I typically it's they view the this activity complete and must reach the end of the lesson to complete the activity. You can adjust to others. Um, you know, some of these can be be useful. Others you won't actually get to do because uh, this isn't an graded activity. All right. You can also set the exp uh, expect completion on date. All right. All of that's all set. Once you're ready. Again, this is all just set up for the actual lessons. We haven't created the lesson yet. We're just creating uh, the parameters of that lesson. We hit save and display. And now we are in the lesson. And here is where you will start to build things out. So you can add um, a variety of things from you can import questions that you have elsewhere within your within uh, Moodle. You can add a content page. You can add a question page. So you might alter between content page and question page. Um, so I might start with the content page. And once again, I am borrowing from uh, a Wikipedia article to get content on here pretty quickly. So I'm just going to throw in some text. But again, we have our trusty uh, HTML editor toolbar here that allows us to add so much more. I can add emojis. I'm always excited about that. I can add images. I can add video and audio content. All of that stuff I can just toss right in here. Uh, it has a few quick questions. You know, arrange content bu buttons horizontally. If I don't do that, then I believe they'll be vertical. We'll see what that looks like in a moment. Uh, and then it's asking us to provide. Um, a description of this page. Uh, we discuss the uncanny valley. And the options we have is um, we can, this shows this page, or uh, this, this allows us to kind of say what does, what are we allowed to move to next? Um, so there's a couple different options here if you really want to trace this out. Um, 
so that's what this page is about. Next page is, uh, we'll just put learning more. And we can continue to do this um, for each of the pages. But let's let's start for now, just have these uh, pieces. So I'm gonna hit save page. And now I have that first page. Um, this is great. Now I want to add more. And so, all right, so, this is where Moodle starts to get a little less intuitive and you can be a little bit confused, like, okay, this is where I am, what do I do next? Um, you can select on the, th the item that you just created, right? So we just created this, this, this lesson and now you can add what comes next. So I'm gonna add a question page and it gives me choice of multiple choice, essay matching, numerical, true, false. I'm gonna simply do multiple choice and put in some information. So very simple, you know, this is what you would name it. So Candy Valley question. And I'm gonna keep it simple with what is the Uncanny Valley? And I'm not going to go into detail here. I'm gonna make it real simple for my answers. Uh, answer one, answer two, I can continue to add more answers. And then notice I get a couple different uh, options here. So under response, if they use this, I can provide a response. If this isn't the right answer, say, oh, you know, good try, you know, try again. Um, I can also set, if they answer this, do they go to a different page? Maybe I send them back to uh, the previous page for them to revisit. I can also give it a score. Whatever I give the score, that will indicate if it's correct or not. So if I give this a score of zero, this means it's a wrong answer. If I give this a score of five, that means it's the right answer. And so notice the others are set to zero. All right, so if this is the right answer, then I'm gonna actually select them to go to the next page because they got the right answer. If it's not the right answer, maybe they stay on this page. Great, perfect, Hit save page. Now notice we are starting to um, get a little bit of, you know, a menu here. But also notice we, uncanny, if we look at this, uncanny, uncanny valley question seems like it comes first and the uncanny valley seems like it comes second. So if I'm ever concerned about that, if that doesn't make sense, I'm going to turn edit mode off. And you see, this is, this is still telling me something. All right, so let me see what it looks like as a student. So I'm gonna go in as that student. And yep, so notice this order is a little bit backwards. I should be seeing the description first and then going to the next item. If that's the case, I can, when I am back in this, this item and I want to edit the lesson, I can simply move it. So I'm going to move the page here. All right, so now I've resorted the order. This makes more sense. This is what comes next. Now, one of the reasons that happened, it, I, I think, is we added it up here versus adding it down here. So again, this is something that's not clear, not intuitive, etc. Um, within Moodle is that by adding it at the top, we were saying this predates this lesson. Whereas adding it at the bottom means it should come after this particular item. So if we go back and test this theory, if I come to Unvalley Question, select it, and come to the bottom here and decide to add another content page. I'm gonna add a page on the entomology of the Uncanny Valley. Throw that in there. Um, arrange, you know, leave these things pretty much as it were. Um, I'm gonna leave these. Actually, I'm gonna provide a, um, next lesson. And this will jump to the next page. All right, hit save page. And now we're really starting to build this out. Um, 
And so just kind of as a sense of here are the different things that you can start to build out, you can think about it as if there are a guided set of actions you want students to be doing, you can largely use the editing lesson or the, the lesson feature to do that. Um, you definitely want to brainstorm in advance what that flow looks like. As you can see, I'm doing it a bit on the fly. Uh, but if you're really trying to think about what are the things you want them to know, things you want them to do, um, and how do you want that to relate between um, actions and uh, content that they're, they're exploring. So I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any other questions and thank you so much.